did have a pretty rough week to be honest with you guys, but I did pull out some phenomenal fragrances to lift my mood. So stay tuned to find out what fragrances I chose to wear throughout the week. Hey, what's going on guys? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, what I do is I make fragrance related content. So if you love fragrances, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and also be sure to follow my fragrance Instagram page. But that's right, another week means another weekly fragrance rotation. And if you aren't familiar with the series that I do, we pretty much go over what fragrances I chose to wear on each day, how many sprays, the kind of weather it was, and of course, we got any comments or not. So without further ado, let's start this week off on Sunday. Okay, so for Sunday, it was pretty cloudy, pretty cold. I believe it was like in the mid 60s on the high end of the temperature scale. And I went with one of my favorite clone houses. Of course, I went with Alexandria Fragrance's Arabian Horse. Now, Arabian Horse is actually an inspired by version of Parfum Zamali's Herod, which unfortunately I do not own. But I am a big fan of that scent profile. It's very spicy, warm, tobacco heavy, and man, Alexandria Fragrances never disappoint. It is very close to the original Herod, even though I haven't really tested them side by side to get a great comparison. But when I smell this one, it definitely reminds me of the original Parfum de Mali Hair, which is beloved by many, many people and a lot of people's favorite fragrance from the house. You do get a lot of spices like cinnamon, I believe is in here, a lot of tobacco like up in front. If you love tobacco, you would love this one. And of course, Herod's an extremely expensive niche fragrance. So if you don't want to shell out 300 bucks or so for a bottle of that, definitely go with Arabian Horse. You would not be disappointed. And of course, with Alexandria fragrances, you're going to get nuclear performance. So don't expect nothing less. But on that day, I did go eight sprays of Arabian Horse. Didn't really do much since it was on Sunday. Got no comments because I wasn't really around anybody. But yeah, I definitely enjoy this fragrance a lot. All right, so heading into Monday, I am at work for most of the day. It was actually a pretty sunny day as well, which was nice, even though it was still in like the mid 60s. And I pulled out Guerlain's Loam Ideal Le Intense. Now, to be honest with you guys, this was my least favorite flanker that I own at least. I own the EDP which is my favorite, and then I own the Sport, which is a phenomenal, unique, sporty fragrance. This one, however, I wasn't the biggest fan of it at first, but when I wore it the other day, man, that did change quite a bit. I enjoy this one a lot more than I remember. It still does have that almondy kind of a signature touch from the Loam Ideal line. It also has some like chili peppers, very spicy, very leathery as well. It is, I believe, the darkest flanker out of all of them. So on that day, I did actually go eight sprays. I did get one compliment at work as well. When I was walking, I had this woman behind me and she's like, wow, you smell good. And I was just like, thank you very much. And she just really liked this fragrance, which isn't really the most crowd pleasing fragrance, but it definitely does have a, um, a unique kind of compliment factor about it that a lot of people would actually enjoy. It's also very masculine from like the leather touches and stuff like that. But yeah, it definitely changed my mind quite a bit after wearing it. It's going to Kind of have a hard time competing against EDP still, but it's gonna give it a run for its money for coming in number one. So yeah, that's what I wore for Monday. All right, so for Tuesday, also I wore for most of the day. It was another sunny day and also in the low 70s, so a little bit more warm than the previous couple of days. And I went with Fragrance One's Office for Men. Now, to be honest with you, this fragrance does not deserve the hate that it got. Obviously, this is created by Alberto Marias, which is a master perfumer known to create some of the most crowd-pleasing designer fragrances money can buy. But of course, Jeremy was behind the scent as well, which I think he actually discontinued this line, which is very unfortunate because some of them are very good, like Date for Men, Black Tie, and of course, Office for Men, the original. And most of the time when I wear this one, I do get a comment. So yeah, extremely crowd pleasing. It's heavy on Embroxin, heavy on citruses, kind of like um, DNA of like Dior Sauvage and Bulgari's Tiger with that Embroxin heaviness. It's definitely in here as well. But on that day, I did go eight sprays of Office for Men. And by the way, this stuff is beast mode, nuclear, very strong. It does have a sharp kind of a piercing vibe about it that just pushes off the skin extremely well. And I, when I'm saying that, I mean, it definitely pushes off like maybe 12 feet or so. Extremely powerful fragrance. And that's exactly what Jeremy was going for. He was just going for comments. He was going for beast mode. And he definitely did the trick with this one. We got no comments on the day of Office for Men. But yeah, that's what I decided to wear on Tuesday. So for Wednesday, also at work, it was kind of like a cloudy, gloomy day in the low 70s as well. And the fragrance I put out was Dior Sauvage Elixir. Now, Elixir is my favorite flanker out of all four of the Sauvages. It just brings a more upscale, kind of grown up, mature vibe about it with that lavender. 
and I'm a huge fan of a barbershop lavender and you definitely get a huge dose of it in here. It still does have that ambroxan that the original Sauvage is known for, but just toned down a little bit and it's much better blended together than the OG being like kind of piercing and sharp and just too loud in my opinion. This one is way, way better. So if you're looking to get Sauvage, definitely go with the Elixir in my opinion. It is a little bit on the more pricier side and they also just came out with a 100 ml bottle, which I think retails for like 230, which is absolutely insane. I did go six sprays of Elixir, so a little bit less than the past couple of days as my normal eight sprays, because like I said, this stuff is nuclear. One of the strongest fragrances in my collection. Of course, it is a pot foam concentration as well, so you're gonna expect that. And what's funny is I actually have a story. I did get a comment on this fragrance, but not on that day. So I had this woman come up to me at work and said, I forgot to tell you how good you smelled yesterday. I need you to write that fragrance down. We started talking about fragrances and stuff like that. She wanted to get it for her husband, I believe she said. I was like, wow, you're gonna be having him smell like a king. And I had to think for a second what I was actually wearing on the prior day. Cause like I said, I had a terrible rough week personally and my mind has not been in the right spot lately. So I kind of forgot what I was wearing. And I actually told her I was wearing Fragrance One's Office for Men, even though it was Sauvage Elixir at the time. So, I mean, Office for Men is still a phenomenal fragrance, still smells great, and he'll still be smelling great as well with that one. But yeah, I was actually wearing Elixir, which I just thought was a funny story. But yeah, that's what I wore for Wednesday is Sauvage Elixir. So heading into Thursday, also at work all day long, it was still cloudy in the high 60s. And I put on one of my favorite tea fragrances of all time, of course, Moss Milano's Russian Tea. Now, with Russian Tea, man, this is so complex. You get some raspberry, you get some leather. Of course, get that black tea, like a smoky black tea in this fragrance. You get some mint as well. And what's crazy, you could detect all of those notes like dominantly. They're all dominant all together. I actually thought at one point this would be my signature scent, man. I love it so, so much. If you love tea, you love leather, you love fruity raspberry, you love smokiness. And of course, if you love mint, you have to check this one out. So on that day, I did go eight sprays of Russia tea, which is a lot for this fragrance because it's extremely potent as well. Got no comments on that day, but wow, I enjoy wearing this one so, so much and it just lifted my mood. And that's what mint is known to do actually is lift your mood, put you in a better spirit and just make you happy. And this is exactly the fragrance to do that. On Friday, I'm also at work. I've been working a lot of overtime as well. It was cloudy in the low 60s, extremely low 60s. I think it was almost 50 some degrees. And I put out one of my favorite Tom Fords and the Tom Ford that started his whole fragrance journey. Of course, Tom Ford's Black Orgy EDP. Now, thank goodness they started marketing this as unisex because when it first came out, it was marketed as towards females, of course. But there's nothing feminine about this one, in my opinion, at least. A guy could definitely pull this off. You get some of that orchid note, but what is dominant to my nose is that earthy mushroom truffle note. It's very earthy, very dirty smelling. You also get some like dark chocolate in here. It's just so, so good, so complex as well. And if you're a guy and you were kind of scared about picking this one up, don't be, I'm telling you right now, one of my favorites and a guy can pull it off 1000%. Now, on that day, I did go eight sprays of Black Orchid. Like I said, it was a little bit colder. And I did also get a comment on this fragrance as well when we were in like a meeting. Well, actually I didn't hear her at the time, but she said something like my Mr smell good man or something like that and later on in the day she's like oh you didn't hear me comment you early on your fragrance i was like no i didn't and then she just repeated what she said but yeah she really enjoyed this one and so do i one of the best unisex fragrances of all time in my opinion so highly worth checking out is black orchid you will not be disappointed especially if you love earthiness and you love gourmand chocolate fragrances this is a must so wrapping week off on saturday it was pretty sunny and it was also kind of cold as well in the high 50s now on that day, honestly, didn't really do much. I did go out to eat later on in the evening, but I decided to wear this fragrance because of the name and the story behind it. Of course, I'm talking about Mas Milano's Love Kills. Now, earlier in the week, I did wear Mas Milano's Russian Tea and then obviously Love Kills. A big fan of this house and I actually want to check out a couple more, but I wore Love Kills because of the situation that's going on in my life. Like I said, I've been a rough week personally. And this fragrance is inspired by Romeo and Juliet. Of course, we know the story of Romeo and Juliet. They fell in love. And yeah, love definitely kills. And with this fragrance, 
it is extremely complex from the opening to the dry down. Of course, in the opening, you do have a very bright kind of pink rose, in my opinion, resembles the love side of things. And in the dry down, you have some like dark resinous qualities that resembles the kill side with some like patchouli and stuff like that. But just phenomenal rose fragrance. One of the best rose fragrances money can buy, in my opinion, as well. On that day though, I did only go three sprays, so not too, too heavy of this one. I also did do some shopping very early in the morning as well. No comments from Love Kills, but if you're looking for a rose fragrance, you must check out this one. It's very underrated. A lot of people haven't really discovered the house of Moss Milano, which if you haven't, you're definitely missing out because they make some of the finest niche fragrances when it comes to perfumery. So yeah, definitely check out Love Kills as well for our rose fragrance. But that's gonna do it for this weekly fragrance rotation. Let me know down below the fragrances you guys chose to wear throughout the week. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you guys haven't already, and I'll see all you guys in the next fragrance video. Take care, everybody.